Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you can hear me correctly. Good time zone to you guys. Uh, I see Dream Cartographer. Yes, happy birthday, Constant. <laughs> so, welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, sorry, I am a bit late. Uh, things did not go quite as I had planned. I did want to debut the um, episode on this stream, but I cannot because things didn't work out. <laughs> but we are supposed to be debuting the episode um, on the stream later today. So today is special, as we know. It's Constance's birthday. Happy birthday, Constance. And that means we are going to do two special streams. So this is the first stream. And then we're going to do one more uh, in the evening, uh, to for me at least, it's going to be at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, which I know that may be morning for some people, that may be midnight for some people, so um, thank you guys for joining me today right now, and um, welcome, if I haven't said it, it is a special stream. Constance's birthday is July 18th, so I thought that I would do something special today for that. Um, we are still in summer camp, as you know. Summer camp, um, World Anvil and NaNoWriMo summer camp. And I have been quite busy, so summer camp isn't going exactly as I had planned either. But we are pressing on and we are going to do what we can. An exciting thing did happen this weekend. They, uh, World Anvil released the gold prompts, AKA the discovery category, which is something pretty neat. And I actually did not make the stream. Unfortunately, I was not able to make the stream that they uh, debuted the prompts on, but the prompts are up and they are on the site. So we are going to check those out very soon. Um, as for the celebration announcements, I have a bit of sparkling water and a glass. So I am going to ooh, I'm going to pour myself a bit of that. I know it's quite early, but we shall celebrate today. Uh, if you would like to get something, it could be water, it could be anything, and we can toast and say happy birthday to a special obligatory associate, Constance Harbor. I also have these birthday cake Hershey Kisses. And so basically these, I like these because I'm kind of allergic to chocolate. So I buy those anyway sometimes when they have different Hershey Kisses that aren't actually chocolate. They're like cream and stuff like that. So I had those around and I thought, why not eat some of those on stream? I don't have any cake, but these will do. There is a thing that I uh, also set up. A handsome co-host, on a poorly unrelated note, handsome co-host uh, should be in the chat. And I believe that if you exclamation point data query he may have a special surprise for you. I don't know if this will work, but um, if you guys want to test it out, anybody in the chat, you can feel free to exclamation point data query and see if he responds to that. All right, so without further ado, because I know I'm already late, we are going to dive in to summer camp. So this is um, the summer camp page. We've already gone through the copper prompts, which were expanse, yes. And then the silver prompts, which were leadership. Now we have the gold prompts, which are discovery. And so we are going to try to see what we can discover with that. Um, ah, my microphone 
good. Okay. So it's funny also this celebration stream is because we're halfway through summer camp. It's officially the 18th, which is over halfway through the month of July and I feel like time is flying by too fast. Time is going way too fast. But that's it. What is time? <laughs> um Okay. So here we are. We're going to start here. This is the first gold prompt, I believe, and it is a settlement that was lost or discovered. Hmm. A settlement that was lost or discovered. We talked about that may be a thing um, in one of the streams. We said that it may be um, a settlement like the ancient city of, you know, they always have in kind of fantasy and adventure Indiana Jones style there's a like lost city of Atlantis or something like that and of course that is something that we can cover I don't know if that will be helpful in uh, the world of secret agent someone well we'll see what we can do um, the second prompt is a location an astonishing natural wonder so I'm sure that could be like a mountain it could be pond but I think that there's they're probably thinking of things like landmarks like the Grand Canyon or like Niagara Falls or like n those natural wonders of the world Mount Everest stuff like that um, so we can see what we uh, can do with that one then we have a species recently discovered or rediscovered species so of course um, when people discover you know different animal species of course the animals already there but we discover it and we learn about it even though we didn't know it existed before so that's an interesting one um, an item is the next prompt a lost or discovered artifact of significance or power so it's a lost or discovered artifact of significance or power in a fantasy world, it could probably be like some kind of sword that has power. Um, or it could just have power as in like, this is the crown that the king wears. So that that's power. So it can have like a magical kind of power or it can just have status, I guess. Significance or power. So, synonyms. Um, next technology a technology lost forgotten or shrouded in mystery hmm that's an interesting one so sometimes um, in the ancient days people came up with lots of inventions but a lot of times they weren't properly properly documented or you know it got lost in translation or whatever so that is something to look out for um, when people rediscover things that were done in the past but it was lost to time so far all of these are like putting me in the mind of a fantasy or like an adventure kind of you know but that's that's the theme of discovery we can still try to make these work with secret agent someone but I'm not getting any um, immediate ideas about it right the next is a lost or discovered monument which is kind of like kind of like the lost um civilization i guess that was found um the settlement yes the lost settlement that was mentioned earlier so this could be a building in that settlement that was discovered S um like they said they're trying to link them all together but you can do whatever you want we can do whatever we want Mm, so a monument like a building um, it could be a castle or a temple or anything there's lots it's there's lots to explore I just am not immediately seeing anything that I can work with in this current world that I'm trying to work in um, I do have other ideas for you know other stories and stuff like that of course we can go to Winsome Horde for a lot of stuff but I'm trying my best not to do that too much 
Mm, but we can and we will if we have to. Next is an explorer, researcher, or other character motivated by discovery. Another character. I love characters. So who can we focus on who is an explorer, researcher, or other character motivated by discovery? I guess I'm sure that there are some will-o'-wisp agents out there that like discovery. I just, I don't really zoom in to most of the will-o'-wisp agents unless they're relevant to the current storyline that I'm writing, but of course there are agents. There's lots of agents. We can even make up agents. Um, so that will be a fun one. The last is a travel log or other document associated with discovery. Travel logs. I love that kind of stuff. So, hmm, that's an interesting batch and I'm not immediately seeing anything that I can work with, but we will brainstorm about it. Okay. Let's see. Time for a test. Happy birthday to Constance. If it can just be a researcher, can't it just be a prominent base op or something? Correct? Dream car photographer, that's great because that's another thing. We don't have to focus on somebody who's actually going out and discovering things. Base ops can also discover things right from their desk. So that is an awesome thing to think about. Um, yep, we got a good idea already then. So as we are doing that, we're going to take a quick break and I think I want to, um, a lot of people have probably already seen this one, but we do have a uh, the the original uh, first birthday um, video that I debuted last year on Constance's birthday. And it wasn't really her birthday, but they were talking about birthdays. So I think that if we just, um, let me see if it's in the world. Yep, there we go. All right, and we can just go ahead and watch this for a brief moment. As a preface, this is a um, clip of someone in Constance riding in the car, and birthdays just happened to come up, but it is not her birthday currently. Um, some of you may have seen this already, and some of you may have not seen it, so without further ado, I shall press play and if anybody has any questions afterwards feel free to put them in the chat or message me So, our man is in suite 8 what? 718. I thought you said you remembered everything. Mainly the things I've read, not necessarily things I've heard. Especially not things I've heard from McCox. Often, after he finally finishes one of his tangents, I can't recall whether my mission was to infiltrate an enemy base or to take the frozen pizza out of the oven. <laughs> True. It's a shame he couldn't provide the usual brief folder for this one. You must have taken it upon yourself to write down the key details. Actually, I didn't write it down. I automatically remembered because 718 is my birthday. Well, I forgot. It's 187 to you Brits, isn't it? <laughs> Correct. But clever nonetheless. A compliment. Why, thank you. How flattering. <laughs> What about you? When's your birthday? Hmm. Birthdays are unimportant. Hmm? Ha ha ha! I figured you would say that. You know how this works. 
Not this little game again. Yep, it still applies. You got to tell the absolute truth for the next two minutes, starting now. Ugh, fine. For the record, though, that was the truth. I believe that birthdays are unimportant. Okay, but you've got to admit, the day you are born really is kind of a big deal. I mean, like, a whole new person arrives in the world. The actual date, perhaps. But every birthday after that is simply another day in your life. Yeah, another day of living and breathing. A blessing from God. Precisely. A blessing from God. Okay, then. If you know this, why are you so unappreciative? I'm not unappreciative at all. Just because I don't treat birthdays as special as you treat them doesn't mean I'm unappreciative. You know you're supposed to be telling the truth, right? I am. In fact, I may even be more grateful than you. Please. If you think about it, I am equally thankful for all the days, but you're only thankful for one day. I am not only thankful for one day. More thankful for one day. So much so that you feel the other days have become unimportant. I don't think the other days are unimportant, per se. It's just that birthdays are a little more fun than their th typical day, you know? Not always. Sometimes they're just as average. Sometimes they're worse. But still, everybody has one. I didn't say otherwise. Wait a minute. I know what you're doing. You're just beating around the bush and stalling to avoid my question until the two minutes are up. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm just telling the truth like I'm supposed to. Isn't that the game? More like taking one from Commander and going off on a tangent. It's hard to speak the truth when your mouth is closed. Sure it is. And there we go. Two minutes are up. All right. Since you don't consider it fair, I'll still honor the game for two more minutes. You better. But this time, I'll only tell you which date is right if you're able to guess it. What? That's not fair either. Take what you can before I change my mind altogether. Fine. Challenge accepted. Time is ticking. Okay, okay. Did it already pass this year? No. It's coming up this year? No. What? It's today? No. I thought you said you were going to tell the truth. I told you, if you guessed the date, I'd you confirm it. Each individual day on the calendar, one by one. 365 guesses. Ask away. I'll answer truthfully. <sighs> you enjoy torturing me, don't hmm. you? Maybe. All right. January 1st. No. January 2nd. No. If it's December 31st, I will end you. <laughs> Is it December 31st? <laughs> no. January 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th? No, no, no. And no. Is it in January at all? No. Ha! Is it in February? I said dates. Fine. February 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th? No. March 1st? No. February 29th? What the heck was that? Just testing the brakes. Okay, you know what? <laughs> In point five miles, your destination will be on the left. We'll finish this later.
Okay, so we have a couple of things in the chat. I'm not sure about this Amadeus, Amadeus person. I believe that they may. <sighs> I don't know if they're scammer. Sometimes they're spammers. I don't know. Maybe you're not. If you're not, hello and welcome, Amadeus. How are you? Mm. I can only assume the best first. So, we are, um, if you exclamation point birthday in the chat, then a handsome co-host will say happy birthday to Constance and I will blow the little party thing. So if you want me to do that, I will do it. Um, we do have also more summer camp to get into. So let us get back to that. <sighs> we are going to have to create our TBA case files for discovery. So we have settlement that was lost or discovered. Settlement. Birthday concerts. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, we have that. Settlement. Now we have the next prompt is a location. These are really going to have me thinking a lot because. I can only imagine like fantasy stuff or Indiana Jones style stuff and I know that there's way more that can happen but I just am not thinking of it right now I can't oh this geography species an item so another thing is maybe I am staying in a box because it doesn't all, not all of the things have to be from will-o'-wisp they, they can be things that are in the world that will-o'-wisp agents are you know trying to find or trying to protect. It doesn't have to be something that Willow has created. <gasps> no, don't talk about the Bermuda Triangle green cartographer. That's a mystery dream cartographer. All right, since it's a special stream, I'm going to go ahead and say something. Um will o -Wisp does a lot of weird things and sometimes you know things go missing and lost um this can be quite spoilers so i'm not gonna say too much but there was a certain plane incident that you may or may not know about and um, the people that were on that plane were not found. They were assumed to be um, de deceased, but they were not recovered. And neither was the plane. Just letting you know that.
So in this world, in this Will of Wisp world, there's lots of um, mystery. Certain agents are um, declared missing in action, and sometimes they. <laughs> yeah, so you know it, you know it. So, yep, you just know it. Just keep that. Um, sometimes people are discovered to be missing in action, and. I don't know. Uh, they are. They don't go into. Will o Wisp does not always go into detail about the events and things that happened surrounding the disappearance. Yep, you sure do know too much already. <laughs> oh no, you might have to get sent to the Styrax. All right, and that's that document. We have all three clues. Actually, all eight article templates. All right, that's good there. And now we're ready to start working. So yes, and if we're looking at this differently, instead of thinking about things that Willow Wisp has, we can think about things in the world that Willow Wisp may be trying to protect or things that they are trying to guard. Um, that makes me also think about, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, the Cyrex. Um, that makes me think about Ginny, though, because a lot of this kind of stuff happened in Ginny's time. Where, um, so, like, the story is continuing, but Ginny is focusing more on, like, an educational standpoint, and it can be geared towards, uh, younger, uh, children, even though, you know, it's still very entertaining for, uh, everyone. Still, uh, the the kind of the premise of Secret Agent Someone itself is a bit more mature. Jenny is more uh, geared towards you know younger um, educational kinds of things. Yep, <laughs> stumbling into spoilers. You you have some good theories. Um, so yeah, she would uh she and her um, mentors would deal with these kinds of things where they have to go travel to different locations and they have to learn about actual history and stuff like that but it's still spy centered but like their missions are like dealing with history and geography and stuff like that so that's the kind of thing that I'm thinking about um, not someone himself but um, the next generation if you may say um so, which one did we kind of think of something about? We have, um, you mentioned something we could talk about. <sighs> I can't think of it. Oh yes, you did say something about we can talk about a base op. Explore a researcher or other character motivated by discovery. Oh yep, yep, you, there you go, you said it. Um, so, we could think about that person. We'll just open it up. So, hmm. I do know about some agents that were mentioned um, in the story. But the ones that I'm thinking about did not really, they're not really centered on discovery. So, this would be a great time to make a new character if we want to. Um, I love putting, as I've said before, I love putting Easter eggs in stream. Um, people that are supporters and fans, uh, we we like to um, put, you know, Easter eggs in story. I mean, not in stream. I said it previously on a stream that I like to put Easter eggs in stories and cameos and things like that. Um, 
so who could this person be? I do know that for um, this little interactive fiction choose your own adventure thing that I made. Uh, so yes, here's a funny thing. We can just explore for a second. <clears throat> so there is the Lifestyles of the Fish and Famous, which was a virtual escape room. And this virtual escape room, uh, without too many spoilers, just in case you want to play it, or if you want to listen to uh, the people from Escape This Podcast play it, basically, um, this was a virtual escape room where you are in a uh, yacht. So basically, there's a billionaire man um, in this world named Ned Bevy, and he's not the cleanest of guys. He's pretty shady, and he did a lot of underhanded business deals. Um, the main characters of this game are um, Darius Brenda and Darius Nullendale. Yes, so they are owners of a plastics factory in Australia. So Ned Bevy basically comes to them with a deal. He wants their their plastic company is already kind of struggling, so he wants to help them out and he's going to buy their company and he's going to help promote them and everything like that. And oh, you listened to it. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh let me know how you liked it. Um but yeah. <clears throat> And he gives them all these incentives and everything like that. And then, uh, of course, you know, it's not all what it's cracked up to be. He has ulterior motives. Um, anyway, I say this to say that the main characters, Brenda and Darius Nellendil, are anagrams scrambled of the names of the hosts of Escape, this podcast. Their names are Bill Sunderland and Danny Siller. So I used their names to scramble them up and it was so hard to figure out <laughs> a name for, like with those letters. Bill and Danny are okay but you know um, the Sunderland and Siller last names were just kind of adding a lot of S's and L's in there and it was really hard to like come up with a name so I used this cool site, uh, Decoder and I uh, worked out like Brenda and Darius so then I said okay I can do something with the rest of the letters and I still had two letters left over and I just had to put their middle initials so I think it's Brenda L and Darius S or something like that Nellendil. Uh so it was, just, it was just fun to do that and I like to put them in the world as easter eggs uh, as cameos because they were the ones that were running through the game so they got to kind of play themselves, but in a character that's in the world. And that was, I think that was pretty neat, and they thought that was cool. Um, so I say this to say that um, this other one that I was working on called Team Building... And it's not complete yet, but we did run through a little bit of it on stream. I was really trying to do this for Adventure April, but um, there's another podcast that's pretty cool called Finish It that I talked about before. Um, it's where two brothers, Chris Yule and Matt Yule, they run through all the Choose Your Own Adventure books. They do some Goosebumps books. They do like different uh, interactive fiction books, and each time they read through, and then they have all these little jangles that they make the whole episode. It's just so funny and um i was thinking that this is a bit ambitious but i was thinking of asking them if i could maybe run this kind of um game on their podcast so uh if i did then this is one of the reasons why i made it where there are two base ops because i wanted it to be um Instead of, you know, usually with the choose your own adventure books and stuff like that, there's only one character. But uh, I wanted, 
I thought that it would be cool to make it a game where uh, a game book where it's two characters so two people can read it together and I even wanted things to be like you can split up so if, you, if you're playing character one and the person you're reading with is playing character two it's like well if you both go over here turn to page one if you both if you both don't go turn to page two if one of you goes turn to page three like that I, I thought of that and then it gets really um, challenging after a while because these are choices and choices and trees the trees sprouting out and all the branches and then it just is a lot <laughs> But it's really fun, and um, I was recently motivated to do uh, some more work in this um, because I ran it on stream, and you guys seem to like it pretty much. Very much. Oh, yes, and also, I did not forget, but I do need to re-upload the audios to those because people who watch them, um, people who watch them after they ran, after they aired, are not going to be able to hear the cool audio of the choices because uh, thanks shout out to dream cartographer for uh, catching that error and uh, that she was not able to hear the cool cutscenes um, when she listened back to the episode so I'm gonna try try very much <laughs> I can't promise anything but I'm going to try very hard to quickly get those done before the end of the month um, and I will make an amount an, an, an announcement I will make an announcement when those are complete so that you guys can go back and read uh, re listen to the episode because I think that those audio clips were cool um, the thing about it also is yeah the general regatto um, that was a last minute kind of thing and I was thinking to myself that I might want to get him voiced uh, by a different person, but the person that I, that uh, gentleman that I solicited to um, voice General Regato, he was new to voice over acting, so I did give him a, a couple of tips and pointers and stuff like that, and um, we just worked together on it quite a bit, so I said I might as well just use the audio, but um, I think he probably wants to take a break from it anyway. So if I was going to have General Regato say anything else, I wouldn't be able to go to him anyway because um, he, you know, I think he's retired and he was just trying to kind of do a hobby. And uh, I guess there was a lot more that went into it than just, you know, talking into a microphone. And yeah. So. I appreciated that. That was a nice, that was a good uh, experience, learning experience for us both. And we could kind of both help each other out a bit. But yes, I believe that I might get General Regato to be voiced by a different person in the future. I don't know if I'm going to replace this audio um, that was used in the um, team building game. Uh, but yes, in the future, he's probably going to be voiced by a different person. Let's see. <laughs> Dream cartographer says, yes, that's two branching paths at once. Three if you count staying together. But still have to intersect and affect each other. Exactly. So it, when you start thinking about it a lot, your brain starts like filling up with all those red uh, pins and the red, whatever you call it, the thread on the uh, cork board. <laughs> And you start seeing all the maths on your face and stuff because th it's a lot to think about and you just feel like, oh, I can just do a choose your own adventure. And the thing is, I love to do that kind of stuff like in person or like an RPG because you can just say, then I went over here. And if I didn't have anything planned there, my brain can think of something really quick. But the problem with the written out games in the books is that everything has to already be on the page. And if you didn't think of it, it can't happen. And the thing I don't want to do is like make it uh, like a set path. Like because when I read Choose Your Own Adventures and they're annoying because they don't have the choice that I want them to have. That's because the author did not write that choice. So therefore it can't be there. But it's like, 
would you go into the scary door or scream and run away? I'm like, well, is there a choice to wait and see what comes out of the scary door? No. So, you know, I just kind of just want to give those more options to make you not feel like this isn't me anymore because I wouldn't do this. Um, but I do know that there's still going to be some um, instances where you wouldn't have done that. But it's still fun. The fun thing is that it's a fun book and it's a choice. And the fun, um, the fun of it is just playing through and, you know, do, making the choices and doing the fun things. So I think sometimes I think too hard about it. And that's probably what's uh, discouraging me from continuing it. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to prepare for everything, but preparing for everything in advance is hard. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's another thing. There's lots of thought, um, lots of thought goes into this. And when I was like play testing it, um, there was something that somebody caught. And that's another thing. I like to play test these things because I think so. Um, if you guys listened to the previous stream where we played this game, uh, I know you weren't able to hear the cool audio. I will try to fix that as soon as possible. But um, the thing that I want to mention is. Some of these choices um, I thought were interesting to, uh, e like, every single part of the story, I think, can this be a choice? Can this affect something? And I will let you know a little spoiler that, um, you know, when you guys were in the car and you were messing with uh, the air conditioning and you messed with the radio, um... There's a point in the story where it says, if you messed with the radio, go here. If you didn't mess with the radio, go here. Because messing with the radio, even though it didn't seem like it did anything, it uh, changed the mood. That's all I'll say. Because some of you guys didn't hear it anyway, so I will try to upload it so you can hear it. But for those who ha did hear it, I guess you will kind of maybe know what that might, uh, what mood that might be. Um, that changed <laughs> due to the fact that you messed with the radio. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's that. I probably, if I'm going to do that, it's probably going to be after summer camp because I realize we're past, we're, we're, we're past halfway mark of summer camp. And I literally only have, what, two articles up? <laughs> I only have two articles up, and um, where do I find my own page of summer camp? Oh, I know how. We can just go to my world, and... I did publish them here. I mean, I have the little box here, so it will populate here. Yep, there were only two. It was just these um, volcano, uh, volcano and sky bullets, which are still working names for both of them. Yes, it could. It, how could that be any anything but awkward? Okay, so um, I can give you a quick little spoiler. Um, it will still be fun to play, I'm sure. <clears throat> but the thing is, so when they were in the car, if you mess with their uh, radio, at first I wanted you to have a choice of what you play on the radio, but then I said, that's just going to be too much. So I said, I'm just going to make it where if you say you mess with the radio, one song will play. And it was kind of like a romantic song. So... Constance was making a joke about how someone was trying to give her a hint and stuff and he was like, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> the car did it by itself and then, so later inside the building when they're going into the um, when they're on into the uh, base what is it called? 421, Bunker 421 they uh, let's see, I looked at the part of the team building 
Yes. So the thing is, that is that is um. There's some parts in here that say. Uh, play mode, which means it doesn't affect the story. The th the thing that I mean by that is. That means that, like how you guys were at first a little bit nervous about like messing with the radio, messing with this, because you thought maybe if I do that, I'll get in trouble. And I just didn't want you to think that if I click go crazy, then, you know, the whole thing will end instantly. So this is why it's called play point. Because anything you're doing here, you're not going to instantly uh, end the game. Like, you're not going to die. You're not going to get sent to the Styrax. Anything you do inside of a play point, it may consequently affect something, but it's not going to instantly affect you right now. So, yeah, yeah, you were a little bit nervous about that. So that's all I was saying. So there's three points of this. This is another reason why it's quite a lot to do. Um, not to mention the CSS, because I have it where all these are bookmarked and linked, and all these are like in spoilers and all that kind of stuff, and it's, it's, it's a lot to do. But I will just show you the basic overview. The basic overview is there's plot point, and the plot point um, is basically a story. So this is something you can't affect. So it will say something like you click into the camera and see this. So it's like a cutscene that you cannot control anything about. The second, uh, so those are marked in blue. And the second is play point. So the play point is green, and that means you can do whatever you want in this moment. And when you're in this moment, you're not going to instantly get arrested. It's not going to say, game over, the end of the book, try again. Like, it's not going to say that. No matter what you do, nothing is going to happen to end your story right now because this is just the fun part. Yes, it doesn't lock you into an ending. Then, choice point is the purple. So this says one of uh, you spots a couple of General Regato's assistants staring suspiciously at you. Then it says calm down and wipe the smile off of your face and cut it out or pay them no mind and keep playing around with the car. So even inside of the play point, you could stop playing with the car or you could keep playing with the car. But it's not like the General Regato's men would just come up to you and interrupt you right there because this is a play point. They're not going to interrupt you. Once it becomes a choice point, you can choose to keep playing with the car, and if you do, that's going to take you to a certain ending or a certain other plot point of the story that might lead somewhere else. If you choose not to keep playing with the car, that might take you to a certain ending or a certain point of the story that, you know, will change your events. That's all. So the, what you do inside the play point is just a mystery. That's just like a hidden little variable, like you said. Um, it was something fun to do because even if you play with the car, you don't have to turn on the radio. You don't have to. But if you do decide to turn on the radio, I'm just giving you a spoiler that that does affect something later on. Uh, the funny thing that it affects, it doesn't affect too much, but it is, it is um, still significant. So I'll tell you what it is because I did not get to it yet. Um, in the completed form, so we can't even see it, but this is what happens. If you have them um, listen to the car uh, song, it's something romantic. So Constance is like, what is this? Are you like giving a hint or something? And someone is trying to turn it off. And then um, later in the building, if you did mess with the car, Constance will say, uh, should we go together? Or sh I mean, you know, uh, someone, of course, will say, should we go together or should we split up? And Constance will say, oh, by the way that you uh, played that song in the car, I think you probably want to go together. And, of course, he'll be like, I didn't play that song in the car. And it's like a joke thing. But that will make her get into the elevator first. If you didn't play it in the car, then he will instantly not even ask, can we go together or split up? He will just say, I want to split up and get in the elevator by himself. And then you have the choice to close the elevator doors before Constance can join him. Or oh, hold them open so that she can join him. Even though he's trying to press it to close before she can join him. Um, 
the opposite way if you played the romantic song and she said oh you were trying to give me a hint that means you want to come along with me and we stick together then he'll be like yeah all right whatever and then she will get in the elevator first and say come on you know come on and then when he'll try to come and get in the elevator you can have the option to hold the door open for him or close it so that he can't get to her so still that's a branch but if you hold the door open for Constance when someone's in the elevator by himself and she gets in there with them, it's basically the same uh, point that it would be if Constance is in there by herself and then you hold the door for him to get in there with her. So that both leads to the same point. If they're both in the elevator, it leads to the same point. But if you make Constance get in there and then it closes without him, something else happens. And then if you make someone get in there and it closes without her, then it makes something else happen. So that's that's the funny thing. But there's still there's three points out of that. And still, even if you mess with the car, it's possible that you can have them still go in the elevator together. It's, it's okay. It's just and a little little secret hidden variable, like you said, that is just um, a funny thing. Um, and also, if you let Constance go in by herself, the elevator will close and you still follow him he can't get into the elevator but you don't see what happens to Constance uh, if you let him get into the elevator by himself and Constance can't follow him then he just ends up on the path of he's exploring by himself anyway so that's how it, how it goes so that's why I said it's a lot and it's fun and it's intricate and like I enjoy it but it's still like if you think about it too much i'm like i just need to take a break from this because it's so much and it seems so cool but it's like i always think if i could just zap it out of my brain onto the page then everything will be fine but since i can't do that and i actually have to do the work to put it onto the page and then i also have the audios i have a lot of the audios for this um but i didn't put them together yet <laughs> it's a lot it's just like uh, so much but um, I have a bit of bit more free time for now, uh, so I'm able to do a bit more, but I'm still not completely free doing nothing. Like, I still have to do a lot of uh, things, you know, responsibilities, and then there's other leisure things that are um, taking precedence over this particular one, where you could call this a leisure thing, but it's still, a, it's a side, you know, gig, decisions and paths for life and for games. <laughs> So I have to decide what I'm going to work on when. So that's the thing. Um, I am going to, I know that it's um, past nine o'clock, but I let, uh, I, um, <laughs> I'm trying to talk. I got here late that's what I'm trying to say I started like 10 minutes late so I'm gonna just go until 10 minutes after um, we didn't really do much summer camp but that's all right because it's Constance's birthday and I think I'm going to have one of these birthday kisses and they're they're cool because they have little sprinkles in them can you see the sprinkles yeah yeah the light the light is in the way. There we go. You see the sprinkles? Which are crunchy. They're good. So these literally just taste like... You know when there's cake and then there's sprinkles like on the little little disc things? It just tastes like you, you grabbed a spoon, scraped the frosting off with sprinkles in it, and then just ate it. Like, it doesn't taste like the cake part. But it tastes just like it's frosting with sprinkles in it. So they're pretty good. But they're really sweet, though. Um, if you can hold on one moment. I think I might have a surprise for you guys. Just a sneak peek because we're about to end the stream very soon. But 
we're going to come back at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, which is about it was 9 o'clock. About 8 hours from now um, to do another birthday stream, and hopefully that one we will have the episode, but I want to give you guys a preview of what that episode will be. So, hold on one moment, and I have a surprise for you. <laughs> it. Thank you again. I am just, you know, weird. Um, I was trying to say thank you to Flub2 uh, for following. I don't know if you're watching, but you followed, so thank you. Also, um, I read that you said, who needs cake when you have frosting? So I ate another one of these. The end audio is louder than the rest of the stream i will keep that in mind sorry about the jump scare and thank you that you think the song is dope i composed it um with magic's music maker so thank you so much that was a special surprise someone and uh speaking of him i wanted to let you guys hear the 
beginning of the special scene that I'm going to play later on today. So um, without further ado, I'm going to turn the mic back off so that you can hear that. But thank you to uh, Flub2 for following. Uh, I don't know if you're watching, but thank you so much. And then, uh, yep, I'm going to mute my microphone once again. Hopefully I won't forget to turn it back on this time. And so you can hear the beginning of the scene that you're that will debut later today. Good morning, Will-O-Wisp. Another day, another mission. Let's see. Today's mission is... Oh. oh boring. It's that Gilbert Andrews stakeout, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, him. 46-year-old male involved in several sophisticated high-stakes thefts. Will-O-Wisp thinks the authorities were naive to put him on house arrest and anticipate he'll escape pretty quickly. He's been confined to his secluded suburban home for three days now, with no family or pets living with him. <sighs> he must be bored out of his mind. Mm. Your instructions are as follows. Monitor the residence. Document any comings and goings about the house. Remotely access the surveillance systems. Observe interactions within the premises. Scan for any evidence of correspondence through phone lines, Wi-Fi activity, and any other digital means. <sighs> Sit in the car for 12 hours with Constance. Deal with her annoying gabbling. Ignore her obnoxious questions. <clears throat> Where is she, anyway? She's never this late. We usually meet here in my office, and then head down to Commander together. She wouldn't go without me, would she? <laughs> mm. Well, if she doesn't show up soon, I suppose I'll be going without her. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Huh? Hmm? That's strange. I have a voicemail? No one ever leaves me voicemail. Alrighty, so if that was uh, an exciting teaser for you, I will let you know that the full episode shall debut um, in about um, eight hours, I believe. And hopefully, prayerfully, that will happen. Um, so, thank you guys so much for being part of the stream. I know it went over time a bit, but that's mainly because I was a bit late. Um, as I said, we didn't get much summer camp done, but we did go over the prompts, uh, the gold prompts. And since gold... Obligatory associate! <gasps> Another person! It's Katoipoi! I know! Katoipoi from World Anvil! Thank you for following! I don't know if you're watching either, um, but thank you! Um, much love to you guys. Uh, someone being a dedicated field agent to complement his creating junior skills. Exactly. So, he's, he, he didn't think that that would be a cool mission. Um, we will see what does happen later on. So, thank you so much, you guys. And uh, I think that these uh, followers um, and Dream Cartographer, because Dream Cartographer is an awesome bean. He is always in the chat. I believe you guys deserve a toast. So we're going to end the stream with a another swig of this delicious sparkling water. This is Welch's um, white grape, and it's lovely. So, um, to Dream Cartographer and all the other lovely beans who have um, followed me and posted in the chat and everything. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Cheers. And another for Constance's birthday. <coughs> Happy birthday! Alrighty, so with that, I believe we are going to end the stream. Oh, <gasps> thank you, Katoifoy. Um, it's not my birthday, but it is Constance's birthday, and for that, we will tell her happy birthday again. And since you said it, I will blow it again. 
Happy birthday to Constance. All right, and um, we are about to end the stream, actually. Uh, thank you for joining. Sorry that you were a bit late, but if you'd like to see the replay, I will instantly um, upload this to my YouTube channel as well, and I believe that it does stay on Twitch for about 15 days. Um, also, if you want to see more Constance's birthday, we are going to do another stream uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, which I believe is in about eight hours, and that will have the debut episode of um, this new episode called um, A Birthday Absence, and we just heard a, a um, preview of that, so if that sounds interesting, stay tuned. So thanks so much, everybody. I love you guys. God bless. Much success. Happy camping. And thank you so much for hanging out with me. You guys have a blessed day. And uh, don't be jump scared. I didn't adjust the volume yet. So I'm about to go to the transition screen. And it will be quite loud according to Dream Cartographer. So thanks again for that heads up. I will try to fix it for next time. Bye. <laughs>